Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, July 21st, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about Vice President Mike Pence and President Donald Trump and their deferring viewpoints as they head into the 2024 presidential election. Now, as this headline suggests, Donald Trump and Mike Pence have a rivalry, and it is intensified as they consider their upcoming presidential bids. Now, we haven't gotten complete and total announcements from either of the two candidates that they will be running for president, but what I will say is that it seems to be very clear that both of them very much want to be the next president of the United States. For instance, Mike Pence, the vice president, former governor of the state of Indiana, went around the nation campaigning for different Republicans, putting his name into different parts of an early 2024 field, seemingly intense Intentionally. In addition to that, he has been often criticizing President Trump over the past two years. Ever since Mike Pence left the White House, he's been a much more critical person of President Trump, whereas President Trump has also been much more critical of his former vice president. There doesn't seem to be any chance that the two run together again in 2024, should that option be proposed. Now, Donald Trump also has really put himself invested in the 2022 races, campaigning and endorsing numerous candidates across the United States, even clinching some nominations, most notably. Dr. Oz in the state of Pennsylvania and uh, Ted Budd in the state of North Carolina. What Donald Trump has, does, has done has effectively made him so he is the biggest name in electoral politics on the Republican side, despite him not being in office. Whoever he endorses typically does win. Now, there are some instances where his endorsed candidates do lose, and it is notable largely because the default is if Donald Trump gives you the endorsement, you do win your primary. But at the end of the day, voters can make their own decision and they have in many, many states. In most of them, they do back who the candidate President Trump decides to endorse. But in most of those cases as well, those candidates were already predetermined to win, either being incumbents or people who had the backing of the American public before Donald Trump had even endorsed them. There are some cases where Donald Trump does get some people through the finish line, but at the end of the day, it is very clear and well established that both of these candidates want to run for president again in 2024, and it only becomes much more apparent. As I said, Mike Pence is visiting across the nation. Donald Trump himself is even putting out ads and uh, polls out there from his own Save America Pact. If you go to the poll that is asking the question, it goes to DonaldJTrump.com, and it's a question about whether or not you want him to run for president again. So he's sort of gauging the field to see whether or not voters want him to run. He's pretty much indicated that he's going to run. Just about half a year ago, he told uh, Sean Hannity on Fox News that he had already made a decision as to whether or not he was going to run. And for someone who promised that he would step out of electoral politics should he lose to Joe Biden, being so heavily involved in electoral politics today, I pretty much bet entirely that he is going to be running again. So looking at Trump, looking at Pence, both of them really seem to be vying for this presidency. And now you're starting to see this really gear up into a very early start about endorsements versus endorsements and uh, influence over the Republican Party. Now, this Arizona article is more focused on the Arizona governor's race, and there's a reason why that has happened. For the entirety of Donald Trump's first term, Mike Pence and Trump really haven't made too much of a difference when it comes down to who they support and what they support in American politics. Until now. As we head into 2022, Mike Pence is starting to endorse candidates that Donald Trump has actively endorsed their opponents, meaning that both of them aren't exactly on the same page, whereas three years ago, they absolutely would have been. Now, I'm not trying to read too deep into this to say that this shows that they absolutely hate each other or they're really vehemently against one another. I think you can read into that a little bit more when you see the way that Donald Trump has now referred to Mike Pence, calling him weak, calling him uh, a bad vice president. You see it in the way that Mike Pence criticizes President Trump, saying that he's responsible for what happened on January 6th, that he didn't do anything against what he was constitutionally required to. I mean, you can sort of read between the lines, and I'm not trying to say that this uh, endorsement uh, matchup is what is exactly predicting it, but it definitely adds fuel to the fire. And considering that both of them are likely going to be running for president in 2024, it is very clear why one of which uh, both of these candidates would be involved in this race and why a difference of endorsement could be a test about influence over the GOP and who wins this Republican nomination. Now, recently, and I mean in the past two days, Mike Pence has endorsed one candidate in the Arizona governor's race. Now, for context, this governor's race is expected to be one of the closest in the nation. Right now, 538 gives the Republican Party about a 51% chance at retaining the governorship in Arizona, Democrats a 49% chance at winning it. 
Now, Arizona has gotten a lot more blue in recent history. Donald Trump won the state by just 3.5% in 2016, despite Mitt Romney winning it by nine points in 2012. You fast forward to 2020, Joe Biden wins the state of Arizona. It's had a consistent leftward trajectory ever since the 2016 election, and it seems to be continuing in that direction. However, it is a red wave year, meaning that Republicans have a higher chance at winning the governorship than the Democratic Party does, but it is still exceptionally close. And when you take a look at the predicted margin here for Democrats or Republicans, you find that the margin is just 0.1%. It's so exceptionally close, meaning that every single thing matters within this race. Now, 538 has an expected winner in this primary. That is Kerry Lake. Now, Kerry Lake has been endorsed by President Trump for quite some time and started out with very high polling numbers throughout the race. Kerry Lake is in orange, and you can see that throughout the entirety, even until now, she has been in the lead in the polls for the race uh, in the state of Arizona, pretty much maintaining a strong and dominating lead until now, where she's about nearly 50% of the primary vote. But there's one candidate who seems to be coming from behind, someone who started out with 0% support a year ago, and that is Karen Taylor Robson. Now, this is a Republican who has received endorsements from more traditional, more establishment Republicans, including Vice President Mike Pence. Donald Trump endorsed Kerry Lake, whereas Mike Pence endorsed Karen Taylor Robson, meaning that these two are going to be facing off against each other despite having cross endorsements from the previous administration. And it isn't just these cross endorsements. You're starting to see where the party is dividing between Trump and Pence or traditional Republicans and Trump yet again. It happened in 2016 and Donald Trump was victorious. They didn't do it again in 2020 because a fractured Republican Party was only going to aid the Democrats in 2020. But heading into 2024, it is clear that not everyone is super willing to hop back on the train with President Trump. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they are willing to go towards Mike Pence, which is really what this focus of this video is on. It's about Mike Pence's candidacy and his impact and influence on the GOP and his contention with President Trump. In national polling, Mike Pence can't even seem to break out of single digits nationwide. Donald Trump, on the other hand, holds 53% on average. But what I will say is that there is something to be said about that even with President Trump as an option, Republican primary voters are willing to even go to candidates such as Mike Pompeo, who served as the Secretary of State under President Trump, or Rick Scott, a senator from Florida, another Senator Marco Rubio from Florida, polling in this race. People are turning to Ted Cruz, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, and even Ron DeSantis. The combined vote against President Trump isn't enough to overcome him because he's already at a majority, but it is enough to contest his primary. And seeing that the 2024 primary is practically two years away from being entirely finished means that there could be another candidate, Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, whoever, and they could fight against President Trump and potentially win that nomination. What we are seeing happen right now is Mike Pence's heavy, heavy reinvolvement in electoral politics. If Mike Pence was truly done with his candidacy, truly done with ever being involved in a run for president or being someone's vice presidential contender, he wouldn't be in this position where he's making speeches in South Carolina, a very early primary state. He wouldn't be visiting Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and other primary states if he truly wants to separate himself. And one major thing that is a huge indicator, we saw it with Clinton, we saw it with Biden, we saw it with Trump even. In a potential presidential candidacy, in uh, an early stage of expecting someone to run for president, you look to see if they are involving themselves in the midterms leading up to their presidential run. The reason why that's important, because if people on their party side can give them the credit for their victory, let's say, for instance, Hillary Clinton was out there in 2014 campaigning for a swing seat Democrat, and should that swing seat Democrat win, Seeing Hillary Clinton's backing, because she wasn't nearly as unpopular then as she is now, they may credit her with that victory. They may thank her, and in return, they may endorse her and publicly support her candidacy. That's what we're seeing happen right now with President Trump and Mike Pence. Because when you take a look at this Arizona governor's race, it's sort of a proxy war. Similar to what we saw with Larry Hogan and Donald Trump, I'll make a video about that a little bit later today, where they faced off against each other in a primary. And Donald Trump won. Dan Cox, who is the Republican nominee for governor in the state of Florida, he's not going to endorse Larry Hogan should Larry Hogan run for president in 2024. But if his candidate, Kelly Schultz, was to make an endorsement, 
she might endorse Larry Hogan over President Trump. What we are finding here is that President Trump and Vice President Pence are making different endorsements, likely because they want power within the party, but they can't both get power from the same person. Because at the end of the day, whoever the next governor of Arizona is, if it's a Republican, is going to have to make a decision. And it's very clear based off the backing for either one of these candidates what that decision might be. Now, Carrie Lake is still probably going to win this primary, but we don't entirely know when this is actually going to be uh, a lead that can be taken outside of this close and competitive race. Now, there is still a high expectation, as I said, that Republicans are uh, still within this position where it's about a 73% chance that Carrie Lake wins the nomination, Karen Robson about a 31% chance, if you're just to uh, take the predicted betting markets and turn them into percentages. Obviously, it doesn't entirely add up, but you sort of get what I'm trying to say. People are very confident that Carrie Lake is going to win, but there's still some hesitancy, still some belief that Karen Robson is going to win as well. When you take a look at the 90-day trend, what you find is that Carrie Lake and uh, Karen Robson are closer than they were at different points throughout the campaign season. It was definitely a lot closer in the beginning and end of June. What you found was that it was about 40% for Robson, 42% Lake down to 61. Uh, looking at it now, it's hovering around a three-fourths chance that Carrie Lake does win this nomination. But there's still a chance that Robson does end up taking it away. And Mike Pence would be very happy about that. To reiterate... As I have said in the beginning of this video, and I will say now, President Trump and Mike Pence rarely ever disagreed. In fact, it was very weird, if at all, to ever see an endorsement moving in either directions. I can't remember a time where they endorsed different candidates when they were both in the White House. Because the thing is, when you make an endorsement against someone else's very public, very open endorsement, you are essentially declaring war on them. Directly or not, it is clear, and that is the message that it comes across with. So to see that, I would say that Mike Pence is absolutely gearing up for a bit. I think that has been well established by the moves that he's been making. I keep referring you to the South Carolina speech, but if you want to look on your own to see where Mike Pence has been over the past year and a half, I can promise you it's not in his small town in Indiana. It's moving out across the nation. It's involving himself again in American politics. It's speaking to the media. These are not the steps for someone who said, or at least we thought, would remove themselves from electoral politics. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Mike Pence is a viable candidate for 2024. I've been very clear that I think Ron DeSantis could be the nominee for 2024. I don't know if I exactly bet on him right now. I think I'd bet on President Trump if I could. But I do think that those are going to be the top two contenders. And I said that even before the polls had been released. But looking at Mike Pence, he reminds me a lot of Nikki Haley or Ted Cruz or Mike Pompeo and the moves that he is making. Moves that show that they are willing to contest the 2024 nomination. Now, I don't know if Nikki Haley will run if President Trump does. She said that she wouldn't, and I think that I trust her on that because she's young. She has a future ahead of her, and she very well could be the first woman president of the United States. I would never underestimate Nikki Haley. I do think that at some point, Nikki Haley will be president of the United States. The question is when rather than if. I think that's just maybe my hunch. I could be entirely wrong about that. But I do think that she definitely could win over the masses if she is given the right platform. But similar to Cruz and Pompeo and Haley, Mike Pence is gearing up a bid for presidency. Nikki Haley recently referred to the next president as a her, sort of indicating that she wants to run, even if President Trump does decide to. We'll see what happens, though. I don't know entirely what all of the intentions are for these candidates. No one has officially declared. But looking at Mike Pence gearing up this bid and also going out openly against candidates President Trump has endorsed from over a year ago, it becomes much, much clearer in our eyes that Mike Pence absolutely wants the presidency, and that he's going to need some help to get there. And that's exactly what he's doing, involving himself in these races, even propelling and promoting candidates that would defeat the Trump-endorsed candidate. As I've mentioned briefly, and I didn't spend too much time talking about because I don't think it's the main purpose of this video, but again, you can see the breakdown between who supports who and where that is starting to divide within the GOP. Amongst President Trump's endorsements, you have Michael Flynn, you have Marsha Blackburn, Paul Gosar, and you have many top names such as Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump Jr., Larry Elder, Mike Lindell, versus on the other side for Karen Taylor Robinson, Mike Pence is that endorsement. You also have Barry Goldwater Jr., Newt Gingrich, 
Doug Ducey, the incumbent governor of Arizona. Asa Hutchinson, the incumbent governor of Arkansas. Chris Christie, Mike Huckabee. You're starting to see big names amongst the GOP, recognizable names, stack up against the Trump-endorsed candidate. It isn't full-fledged war, and it's not a full-on anti-Trump movement, but you're starting to see it begin again. And should Ron DeSantis decline to run for president in 2024, Mike Pence might try to take his place. This anti-Trump vote, while not entirely and vehemently anti-Trump, still does exist. They will absolutely be willing to vote for him in the general election, but I can't say that they are his first choice for the nomination in 2024. It's DeSantis or Haley or Cruz or Pence or Rubio or Scott or Pompeo or whoever else they might suggest. And that's the big thing of it all. So right now, Mike Pence seems to be very much getting ready. It seems to be a smart political move if it is successful. And it seems to be leading the way for a new anti-Trump wave and an anti-Trump movement within the GOP to circulate and begin again within the mainstream Republican Party that could prevent this time, unlike 2016, President Trump from becoming the 2024 Republican nominee. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022-2024, actually, election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.